Testing, testing. Okay. Okay, I can see at least two people connected. One says Jordan, another says Leona ICE. Um, the important thing as you are connecting, number one, make sure you're using some sort of headset or um, earbuds. Got a pair here just to show earbuds like this that you come with your uh, telephone, cell phone something like that, so that you are not sending the audio out through your speakers. Um, it will invariably happen that at least once somebody is going to try and use their speakers and we may end up with an audio feedback loop. So the, uh, the recommendation is that if you have them, get yourself a pair of uh, headsets, earbuds, whatever, uh, so that that audio feedback loop doesn't occur. Uh, you also need to uh, click uh, in, you have a little blue team viewer control panel. There is an area called audio in there and that's what you're seeing here. Click in the audio area and then there are two blue squares. No, sorry, Jordan, that's me. Let me minimize that. Um, there are two blue squares and and you should single click on the left blue square, which will unmute your microphone, which means I can hear you. At the moment, I don't hear either one of you uh, in my audio. So if you're using TeamViewer and viewing the screen, click on audio in the little blue TeamViewer control panel, and then click the left square which is to unmute your microphone so that you can be heard. Now, if you are using TeamViewer and that unmute does not work, it may be that your TeamViewer has chosen the wrong microphone. Uh, and we'll sort of talk about that as we go along, but uh, let me bring up the actual My TeamViewer control panel. Do, do, do. All right. In my team viewer control panel, uh, as you're looking at it for yourself, you click on extras and then options. And within that area of extras and options is this window here. On the left hand side, you can click on audio conferencing. And then here's a little uh, bar that will allow you to tell which microphone you're using. The best way to do it is to tap on the microphone and see if your audio bar moves. If it does, you're on the right one. If you uh, do this and nothing happens, that means you're probably using like the microphone on the inside of the lid of your laptop or something like that. So um, that hel helps. <clears throat> to change your microphone or your headset, just click on the little drop down there where it says microphone and choose whichever one gets you your audio from here. Uh, you can also select video. This may or may not work. Hey, it did. Okay. Uh, I'm, I have two things running at the same time and sometimes they uh, contest for things like camera inputs. But anyway, uh, you can also click on uh, video 
And if you have more than one video camera, which I do, I have two, uh, you can choose whichever camera you prefer, whichever uh, gives you the best uh, screen. I'm going to cancel this, minimize this, and then um, the next step after you have your audio up and running, it is totally possible for you to just uh, go through the class with the audio alone and seeing me. I don't have to view you until it gets to the point where you will be uh, demonstrating some of your skills for uh, online instruction, and then it will be necessary for you to have a webcam. It's not necessary now. But what you do need to do next, it would say something like in your uh, blue team viewer control panel, it'll say something like video or my video. If you click on that, you should see multiple squares, including a square that has my video in it and uh, one that has your video, it, which right now it will just look like a silhouette. There is a little camera up in the upper left hand corner. You see it right here, an example of it right here camera up in the upper left hand corner that it has the red cross across it that means your camera is by default turned off you have to click on that little icon to enable your camera so when you connect with team viewer and this is something that uh, if you are planning on being an instructor if you connect with team viewer you're going to have to teach your students Number one, how to turn on their audio. Number two, if you require it as part of your instruction, how to turn on their video. And this is how you do it. Click audio, then single click the left blue box, then click video, and single click the little camera up in the upper left hand corner above the silhouette um, of, with your name. Uh, we do have a chat capability, and uh, you can type any questions or anything here. If uh, the audio is not working for you or, or something else, um, you can actually type there, and I will be able to see that as well. Okay, I see Dr. Bell has joined us. So, uh, Dr. Bell, I'm just talking so people can get, get a good audio fix on me. Uh, so far, I do not have anyone else uh, up with audio. Um, there are a total of four of us currently online. I anticipate numerous more. Um, I've had lots of uh, expressions of interest. So. Uh, let's see what else. It's almost nine o'clock, I think. Yes, it is. Okay. Do, do, do. I'll bet you after such a long pause, Dr. Bell's looking for her headset. <laughs> we have had, uh, this is the longest stretch where we have not had any classes. And I think it's been three months. I think it's been three months. And that's the longest time that we've gone without these Saturday night classes since 2011. So uh, we do these uh, pretty regularly. And let's see if somebody is out there on join.me. Nope, still just one person there. That's fine. Oh, I am hearing some sound. Dr. Bell, is that you? Someone has a microphone and I am hearing it. Oh, I see Dr. Newman, I see, gotcha. It says Leona Ice, that is actually you, understood. Your microphone works. I did hear you there. No, it's not necessary unless you have 
lots of background noise like uh, grandkids or uh, dogs and cats running around behind you or something like that. Um, typically, most of us at this hour of the evening, it's a quiet time. And uh, unless like there's a television going in the background or something that is distracting, um, the background noise is totally reasonable. So I'm still missing Dr. Bell. Dr. Bell, Dr. Bell. We'll uh, do some introductions when we get going. Uh, and I do see someone named Jordan. Uh, Jordan, uh, if you do have audio, again, the important thing is to connect in so that we can hear you as well. Um, otherwise, you will just be looking and listening. And if you have any questions or anything, you can type them down in the chat box. Uh, and I will try and keep an eye out for those, although my chat box is down at the bottom. Let's see if I can move that up. Hey, I can. Very good. All right, so let me move the video up. And, and one more. There we go. All right, I still show, still show Dr. Bell as connected, but typically I see her and hear her, so she may be having some connection challenges, audio and or video. So good evening, Dr. and Mrs. Newman. Okay. Okay. The the good news is, so long as there's no um, audio feedback, we're fine. Um, again, it's it's almost uh, you can consider it to be almost a certainty that when you are teaching with a new group of students, one of them is going to want to use their speakers, and uh, the moment they turn their microphone on with their speakers. Uh, it, it's something to be experienced, I'll, I'll just say that, but you, you don't want it to occur very frequently. So let's see, oh, Dr. Bell said hi, may not be able to stay on the whole time. I understand. That's fine, Dr. Bell, thank you. I appreciate you coming in. Um, so uh, it's after nine o'clock, and Jordan, if you uh, have any uh, inputs or introductions or anything, Please type them into the chat area. It should be within TeamViewer. Look for where it says chat, and then type your chat and press enter. Anything you want to say in the way of introductions. If not, we can get started. Again, I thought I had about five people express interest, and, and two of them were not the Newmans. So, uh, <laughs> Dr. Newman, you were one of the five. So uh, that that's fine. I can teach to an empty classroom, so that's fine. Um, yeah, I think uh, we, we will get started right now. Uh, I'm going to start us off with a moment of prayer, and then we'll do a little bit in the way of introductions, and, and uh, then I will go on from there. So if you would please join with me in prayer. Dear Father God, Lord, we thank you so much for all that you are and all that you do in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the, the gift of love that you have shown us and the, the way you have given it to us in such a fashion that we can again look forward to that right relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son and giving his life to reestablish that connection between us and you. And Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of your Holy Spirit that helps to guide us and guard us each and every day, showing us the path toward you. Lord, watch over us this evening. I rebuke all technical issues in the name of Jesus. Any problems that may occur, Lord, minimize them right now in the name of Jesus. Those that may be trying to connect, Lord, help them to achieve a speedy connection and minimum technical difficulties. Lord, this is all for you. It's all about helping to equip the saints 
for work in the ministry so that souls can be saved. Lord, help us to remember that. It's not about the toys. It's not about the tech. It's about the souls. So this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, well. Uh, oh, yeah, she says she's trying to find her headset. <laughs> I, I figured that. So um, I did send something uh, to everyone about hardware, and I will cover it quickly in, in a few moments. But uh, I did want to uh, give an opportunity for introductions here. Uh, I will go first. <laughs> um, I'm Elder Scotty Ward. I am a member of the Church of God in Christ. I have been an elder since 2010. My Lord, proof positive that the God has a sense of humor. But um, anyway, um, I uh, am a member of New Community Church of God in Christ in Waldorf, Maryland. My pastor and founder is Elder Willie R. Hunt, and First Lady is Evangelist Joanne Hunt. Um, I happen to be married to the church mother, but uh, that I, I don't think that affected too much in, in the way of my calling or my mission. Uh, she's downstairs doing her thing, and I'm upstairs doing this. So um, I'm totally pleased to have been married to her for almost 14 years now, and uh, um, I'm, I'm happy being uh, called to be part of this mission and this ministry, and uh, I'm very proud to be a member of the Church of God in Christ. So that being said, uh, Dr. Newman, would you please uh, introduce yourself a little bit and your wife? Wonderful. Well, it's good to have you here, sir. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Um, Jordan, have you been able to get your audio turned on? Do you have anything to say? I'm looking down in the chat and I don't see anything. Have you been able to connect up your audio yet? Okay. That's fine. Um, and then I also see someone named Participant 3. That may be Dr. Bell, but it may not. Um, if you are the person listed as Participant 3, you don't see your name up there as one of the other participants, click on Participant 3. You can type your name and press Enter, and it will update on all of our screens so that you can identify yourself. 
unless your name is participant. Um, so, uh, okay, thank you, Jordan. I, I appreciate the, uh, the feedback. And you can hear us, I presume, so that's good. I am going to bring this screen down and uh, going to talk a little bit about uh, hardware, and then I'm going to launch into the actual course outline. I sent this to uh, the CHMJI friends group and posted it. I, yeah, I posted a link to this um, on Facebook. So I wanted to uh, uh, at least start us off in reference to hardware and why I have particular recommendations for hardware. Uh, also, uh, the point of this is to keep everyone from over buying. What I mean by that is uh, you can walk into a computer store and the next thing you know, you've practically paid for a used car in the way of computer equipment. And it, in most cases, it's unnecessary. So I want uh, teaching in an online fashion to be something that is entirely economical. And therefore, I have uh, recommendations here that are tested over the course of a number of years that I've been teaching online. And uh, they are recommendations that you can consider to be tested and proven. So uh, that's part of uh, what I offer here. I'll be uh, doing a slide or two on uh, desktop and laptop computers. I'll talk about alternatives. In fact, I have a, a number of examples here that I will show you. I will talk about the internet connection, uh, webcams that you can use. And um, it's pretty amazing uh, that what you can actually use as a webcam, and a lot of people don't even think about it, uh, but you have cameras all over the place. Um, also, headsets or earbuds and microphones will be covered. So to go to the uh, hardware, I recommend, I recommend that you use either a desktop or a laptop using the Mac OS or Windows. And um, a lot of people um, are a little opinionated about that. And uh, because frequently when you find something and it works well for you, you champion that particular thing. Uh, I remember a number of years ago, I was a member of a, I was a president of a computer users group of a computer that I really appreciated, but it's no longer even sold. Um, it was a great computer, but it just did not have the, uh, the marketing in order to be sold. So, oh, hello, Missionary Bedford. Thank you for connecting in. Um, you are listed there as Participant 3. If you uh, would, you can uh, click on Participant 3 and type your name, and we will then see that. Uh, so I wanted to show you a little bit about some of the other hardware that is available, but I don't particularly recommend it. Um, uh, well, also, as we're talking about it, 4 gigabytes of RAM is what I recommend as a minimum. Uh, you can't buy a system that you want to have particular performance and then skimp on the RAM. So um, always get four or more gigabytes of RAM. Um, now here's a, an example of a system that it's quite possible you could use, but I don't really recommend it. This is called a netbook and um, a lot of people haven't seen one of these, but the netbook is a very small form factor laptop, but it typically runs a different operating system. In this case, this one ran on Linux. Um, and the Linux operating system, uh, you know, very inexpensive. Uh, you can get these a lot. Oh, hello, good evening. Good to see you. Um, so uh, the uh, problem with the netbook, though, is that uh, there's a a width and a height on the screen. With netbooks, frequently, the width is 1024, 1024 pixels, which is a good size, but then 
the height is shorter than a normal full-size screen. Uh, regular, uh, it's called Super VGA, is 1,024 wide by 768 high. Well, in order to fit into this tiny form factor, they had to shorten that. So the 768 becomes 600. So this is uh, fine in terms of width, but it's not as tall as the other screens that could be used on there. Because the screen is less, uh, uh, there's less real estate on the screen, I don't recommend it if you're going to be teaching. Um, alternatively, there are things like, um, this is an iPad, iPad mini. Uh, it is probably totally suitable, except that it has such a small screen if you are viewing or if you are trying to share your screen, uh, you can share with iPads now uh, using TeamViewer, but it's very difficult to fit everything onto the screen and be able to use it. So I don't recommend even full-size iPads for teaching with. It, they're probably fine as a student, and in fact, I've had numerous students come in either using their um, iPad or their iPhones, uh, and they've actually attended the courses. But in the end, when you are teaching, uh, I don't recommend something of this size. Here's another one. Uh, I, I guess I have all the weird uh, models and makes of computers. But this is actually called a Chromebook. And um, it looks, you know, it's got a good size screen. Um, it runs uh, pretty fast. It's pretty peppy. Um, and uh, it's very lightweight. It's you know very small in size. And the only problem that I see with the Chromebook is that it runs what's called the Chrome operating system or Chrome OS. Uh, works fine for browsing the web or uh, you know word processing and and spreadsheets and those sorts of things. This is a very capable system, and it is very inexpensive. You can get these as little as $99. But because, again, you are um, teaching, you're going to have to use software. And software, typically, uh, they'll go um, Windows, they'll go Mac, they will maybe go Linux, and then they will go Chromebook. Or, and they'll go, uh, along with Mac, They'll do both iOS for iPads and iOS for iPhones before they go to Linux, and then they'll go to Chromebooks. So this is like fourth in line in terms of what uh, would be supported by a software manufacturer or an application developer. So I don't recommend it, although all of these will work with TeamViewer now. Um, again, not the best just in terms of size. So uh, that's hardware. Are there any questions uh, so far? Anyone? OK, great. So in reference to the internet connection, everybody sees it all the time on television. When you're watching on your own cable TV, they talk about, oh, make it faster, make it faster. You get faster download speeds. You get faster, you know, whatever. Um, I, I'm here to tell you that that's not necessary when you're teaching. Um, the, re the My household internet speed is I think one of the lowest speeds possible with Verizon Fios. I think it's 25 megabytes. And of course there's the 40 megabytes and the 50 megabytes and now they're talking 100 megabytes and something else they're coming up with called gig speed. Fine, but it's not worth the price just if you are trying to get good teaching. Um, Anything that is faster than dial-up or DSL would be just fine. So don't think that because you're buying the bestest and the fastest that it's going to do you that much good. It won't. So just be aware. Don't go buying extra stuff simply because you think it's going to make you a better instructor. Um, next one, webcams. 
there are a variety of different webcams. Um, in fact, I'm going to demonstrate one of the weirdest ones. This is a dash cam um, that you can actually connect up to the dashboard, and you've seen these on television and those sorts of things. Well, guess what? It's a camera. It's got a USB connector, and it can be used as a webcam. Um, so you could use a, uh, a regular video camera, the kind that you have for your handheld video cameras. Those will also work. So just work with the variety of different cameras that you have. Uh, you have a camera usually in the lid of your laptop. The camera that I'm using, and I'm going to, here's the photo of it. Oh, hello. You have video now. Yes, sir. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Uh, the, the webcam that I'm speaking to you with is this one here on the left. It's called a Hue, H-U-E. And I have one of the oldest Hue versions. This camera was new in 2011 or 2012, and it's still going strong. It is a regular uh, Super VGA uh, high def, and no bells, no whistles, um, but it does have, like you can see, this uh, extended neck. And for me, that's very good. I don't want my teaching to be down on the table so that I end up looking down on my students as I'm teaching. Uh, let me give you an example. I'm going to change over to my uh, camera that is in my laptop. And let me show it to you. Options, video. This is the camera. There you go. This is the camera that's in the lid of my laptop. And you notice I can you know, do this, and it changes the actual view within the laptop. But my problem with this is it always looks like I'm looking down at my students. And they probably feel like, intellectually, they feel like they're looking up at me. Um, whereas with the Hue, and I'll go back to that one, the hue is actually sitting almost at eye level to me here, and therefore it, when I'm teaching and when I'm talking to you, it's more, I believe, it's more of an eclectic um, approach than the lid of my laptop. So uh, yes, you can use it. Uh, yes, many of our instructors do. But if you have the possibility of shifting your camera to more of an eye level view, there is benefit in doing so. So again, I don't recommend you go out and buy a Hue. Like I said, mine is six years old now um, and you know, doing just fine. Um, but uh, it is a, a possible alternative. I do have one of the uh, portions of our teaching. I will actually break down a number of webcams and talk about them in terms of features and uh, relative pricing. And you'll find out uh, why, again, just like with your computers, you can overbuy with webcams. So we'll step through that in the next uh, week or so and be able to uh, hopefully steer you in the right direction if you do decide to purchase a webcam. Next, headset or earbuds. Um, I pulled these out a minute ago. Uh, this is just a regular um, set of earbuds. Um, with a uh, straight connector. This connector, let me see, there you go. This connector uh, goes into the side of my computer. Um, it also fits into my phone. So there's what you use on your phone usually will work on your computer. Um, I also have, like for an iPhone, you get those cute little white earbuds. Those work as well. Same connector at the end, oops, I'm sorry, same connector at the end, um, and uh, you can use any of those, and you can, again, when you are teaching, you need to make sure your students have something like this, or they will cause audio feedback. Um, I almost had hoped that we were going to get some audio feedback tonight, just so we could see what it sounds like because you will hear it once and you will not want to hear it again. It just dominates and takes over the entire uh, class. 
I literally have to mute everyone so I can get the class back on uh, the audio so they can hear me. Um, in reference to the headset, if you're looking at this, this is an integrated headset. It has two earpieces. Uh, it actually connects through, uh, I think it's a six foot cable. So I could you know, walk around the room if I wanted to practically. Um, and this is called a boom microphone. In other words, it comes down closer to your uh, face. This whole setup was a whopping $14.95 at Walmart. So again, don't think that you will not get good sound clarity from lower cost options. Uh, you do need to test, uh, but you can find that uh, I started off a long time ago buying $50 headphones, and after a while, oh, my picture is not showing. Is that correct? Dr. Newman? Oh, well. I'm going to stop and restart my video and see if that makes a difference. Any change? Um, may I no. So other people, you're not seeing me? Is that what I'm hearing or seeing? Oh, Jordan, Jordan. That's Evangelist Mary Jordan. I apologize. <laughs> you can't see me. I can't hear you, Evangelist Jordan. Um, but you can hear me, but you can't see me. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me go back to my options, make sure my camera is set up correctly. Well, yeah, but this this is my control panel. That's not the one you should be looking at because uh, I have to close that in order to keep teaching. You should be looking in your uh, team viewer control panel uh, in the same place where your video should show. And this is another, I will call it a, a feature of TeamViewer, but it will, if you, for some reason, you decide you want to close that video section, it will stop your video. So you literally have to have your video up in order to uh, allow me to see your video. So am I still locked up? Or are you still not seeing me? Mercy. Oh, that's no good. Um, well, let's see. Let me try and... All right. Nobody is on join.me, so I'm going to cancel that one and make sure that that is not infringing on my video. Now I'm going to go back and select my video again. Options. By the way, extras options is how you can find all of this. I'm going to change over to my other webcam. And are you able to see it now? Curious. Curious. Well, this is... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is, but typically it uh, increases in volume to the point where it just obscures everything else. Uh, this is this is a reasonable bit of feedback. Um, I don't I don't consider that to be a bad problem. But uh, that's mm -hmm. yes.
<laughs> well, uh, what you might try doing, uh, just to make sure it's not you, is click on the uh, audio and then mute your microphone by clicking that blue, the left blue square. Single clicking on that. That will mute your microphone. If the sound continues, you know it's not you. I guess that's one way of saying it. So, in fact, I'm going to do it just to make sure it's not me. Oh, it just stopped. So, it, I didn't click on my audio. So, that's good. So, you, oh, it just came back up. Hmm. It just went away. And now it's back. It's very, um, it, it, it's noticeable, but it is not at all um, uh, obscuring the other conversations. So, that's, uh, that's fine. That's fine. So uh, in any case, uh, it's important for you and or your students uh, to use headsets or earbuds. Uh, if you're not seeing my video, um, which I don't know how to help make that come back, I've tried two different cameras. So without totally stopping and restarting the session, which I don't want to do. Um, I think we can continue just with the slideshow. The, uh, the headset that you see here is similar to the one I have. And again, it's a boom microphone. I use both uh, earpieces on my ears. I do that because it tends to isolate me from any other sounds in the house. And uh, for me, that's a, a smart way of doing it. So, again, I got my headset for under $15 at Walmart, and it seems to work pretty well. Um, and then let's go down to microphones. And the reason I talk about microphones is that in some cases, people uh, tend to want to get uh, higher quality microphones so they can be heard better. Uh, over my years of experience that I've had teaching, I've tried probably six or eight different microphones, including the one you see on the screen here in the slide. This is a studio microphone, and it's about $65 all by itself. It's a pretty good microphone, has excellent audio qualities, but it is also a very sensitive microphone, and so it picks up anything, anything near me, a car drives by outside, it'll pick it up. So, um, yes, it's a great microphone, but you literally have to put it into a sound enclosure in order to have it just focus on your voice. So, um, I used to teach with this, and, and after a while, it just became too much of a uh, uh, challenge for me to sound good every day without uh, having some sort of extra sound invade the conversations. So I actually got rid of it. Uh, well, I have it, but I don't use it when I'm teaching. So uh, to summarize, the important thing for you to remember is that you do not need to uh, over-purchase. You can usually purchase the bottom-of-the-line computers, um, headsets, microphones, webcams, whatever, and they will be entirely sufficient. All of, and in fact, and when I start doing the portion on webcams, you'll find that there are even features that can be detrimental to teaching online, and you should avoid them at all costs. So they say, oh, well, you can get this. Well, it doesn't do you any good anyway. And in fact, it can distract from your teaching. So I don't recommend those. 
And in fact, I recommend you get the lower versions of each. So um, that was the uh, hardware discussion here. Are there any questions, any uh, comments or discussion? OK. Um, one, one other thing that you will notice that I use a lot when I'm teaching is I'm here in what's called Google Drive. Google Drive used to be called Google Docs, D-O-C-S. And it is a free online method of having files in a word processor, PowerPoint, uh, Excel spreadsheet, et cetera format. And you can actually teach directly from Google Docs from anywhere. You could, you know, in a pinch, if you had to, you could teach from work and, and still be able to uh, teach to your students. All of your documents would be up and online, for example. So, and there are also, uh, like, for example, here's one that I do kind of as an icebreaker, and it allows. If you do it in the right way, it's not set up for that this evening, but it would, can allow multiple people to be doing things at the same time in the same document on the same screen and, um, and not cause each other problems. So that's one of the things I enjoy about Google Docs. It allows up to 25 people to be editing the same document simultaneously and it tracks them all. Um, so you will see me, uh, my entire curriculum is taught through uh, Google Drive, is what it's called now. But I teach everything th using Google Drive because it is just so convenient. I don't have to carry around a thumb drive. Uh, if I, perchance, leave my laptop at home and have to use the laptop at our um, hotel, I could still do it. I could still do it. So uh, I do recommend Google Drive simply because it's so convenient. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our course outline. And let me see the time. Yeah, we, we've gone about uh, 45 minutes, about halfway through. So oops, spring of 2018 now. And uh, this is the outline and essentially how I plan to follow it. Um, and one other thing that I like to show. <laughs> well, I'll find it in a moment. Um, so anyway, this is the uh, course outline and there are multiple modules that I have broken the course into. Uh, we will talk about the Moodle and what's the big deal? Why is Moodle such a, an important part of online learning? We'll talk about some of the key features. We will learn how to use Moodle, how to um, administer courses, how to uh, put together uh, online uh, measurements, such as exams and quizzes, uh, all of those, and also to teach directly from the Moodle. Uh, we will cover uh, course document preparation and upload. I'm going to teach you how you can take a course that you currently have in a non-online format and convert it over and use it in straight online uh, manner. Online teaching techniques, there are actually good and bad ways to teach online. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about those. Uh, for example, you notice the, uh, the lighting that I have here. And you can, oh, oh, wait, you're not seeing me. You can't see my lighting. Well, we'll have to deal with that at, on a, a subsequent uh, session. But the important thing is that light bulbs make a difference, and the various types of light bulbs also make a difference. So I will actually show you how to go um, obtain light bulbs that will give you the best view for your students, because you can get lost 
just buying light bulbs. There are so many to choose from. So among other things, that's some of the teaching techniques I, I talk about. Um, have, uh, let's see, uh, Evangelist Jordan, you were an in a, uh, educator as well, right? As a career. Um, th okay, there is a uh, part of the things that you learn as a uh, classroom instructor is there is a certain span of attention that you you have to deal with, and it's anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Are, are you familiar with that one? Okay, that's in a traditional classroom environment. In an online environment, can you take a guess at what the typical span of attention is for your online students? Dr. Newman, any ideas? I've got bad I've got bad news for both of you. It's three to five minutes. Yep. So uh, these are some of the things that you'll learn uh, as we go through this course so that you will be able to uh, bring people in, keep them uh, at, focused on your teaching, and, and you don't just sit and regurgitate information and expect them to uh, take it all in. Things change when you come from a classroom and go to a virtual classroom environment. The dynamics themselves change. Um, so I will teach you about that as well. Hardware and software, This uh, I actually began with some of that here, but we will go into it in more depth in later sessions and uh, talk about, among other things, the field of view, how that is important for your students and how that's important for you, especially if you wish to use gestures. If you're sitting too close and the only thing that's showing on the screen is your head, it greatly limits you to be able to produce any sort of gestures and have your students see them, for example. And we'll cover that as well. A um, Little bit about hardware and then I do what's called the tool belt. And what I mean by that is there are numerous uh, tools and techniques and applications that you can use. Uh, you're not required to use any of them, but they become part of your list of tools that will allow you to teach effectively online. Uh, we talk about the Moodle, Google Drive, which I've just introduced you to, uh, Join.me, which uh, I did have up, but I brought down because there was nobody there. TeamViewer, which we are all using. FreeConferenceCall.com, this is a new one. Um, it's been around for a long time, but they have just expanded their online meeting portion in the last year. And we've actually experimented with that as well. None of these are uh, the best of the best. Uh, you should always be looking for something that works best for you. But these are my recommendations that I have tested. And we talk about some other things, uh, other tools that may be helpful for you. Screencast-O-Matic, Minicam, Cam Studio, Windows Movie Maker. Many people don't realize that Windows Movie Maker is a free download from Microsoft, and it allows you to edit your videos just as if you were using a professional studio, and it's free. So most people don't realize that because Microsoft doesn't publish it anymore but it is available for download from the Microsoft site. And then I would like to hear if there are any particular tools or applications that you find to be particularly helpful. We, uh, we will then move into measurements. This is a very important part of Moodle and it is probably the most complex portion of online teaching. And that's how do you actually have your instruction um, measured in an online fashion. We'll talk about the various uh, Moodle uh, exam types, question types, which ones are best for online teaching, etc., and why, 
and, uh, and allow you to uh, build your own exams as part of the instruction here. And then last but not least, peer review and practice instruction where we let you take the reins and you actually conduct a, a portion of a session. You invite the students, you host the session, you allow the students to connect into the session if they have any technical issues, you help them to get corrected, etc. And um, we will be your students. The advantage of doing it that way is it allows uh, you to learn and make your mistakes with us rather than in front of students. So um, I will tell you that most of the instructors that have gone through this have been very concerned about the uh, practice instruction because everybody wants to look good. You want to do well, but my uh, my desire is if you're going to make mistakes, make them with us because we are a very forgiving audience. So um, everyone does have fun when we get to that point because you think it's so simple until you start doing it and then you realize the complexities all have to work together. So that is the, uh, the plan. Uh, I call it my uh, outline. You notice I do not teach using a syllabus. I teach using an outline. That comes a little bit from my background. I am a certified technical instructor um, trained by the US Air Force uh, a number of years ago. And I have also, uh, professionally, I am an IT program manager. I have my PMP and numerous other certifications. And everything that I do is not based on how do I say this? There is a theoretical and then there's applied learning. Everything that I have learned over the course of my career has been aimed toward applied learning. So uh, although theoretical is good, uh, I do have multiple degrees, not a doctorate yet, but multiple degrees. Um, uh, I still focus on the application of learning and um, for example uh, and we'll talk about this when we get into the measurements portion I design my exams so the students will get 100 percent they may have to take the exams two three four times but the point of it is I want them to get everything not just a valid percentage of what I've taught I want them to get everything so I literally set my exams to unlimited attempts uh, as being okay. The reasoning is I want them to get every single question correct. So, for example, that's uh, you could call me Easy A uh, if if we were using uh, A's uh, the uh, A through F or whatever it's called these days. Um, but uh, we. Uh, it's a little bit different between an educator and what I call myself, which is an instructor. Um, I trust that everyone has downloaded and uh, successfully installed uh, TeamViewer. Uh, again, don't purchase TeamViewer. Don't purchase join.me. Don't purchase anything at this point. Uh, because they are all trying to sell it to you, but you can use them without the um, without making any sort of a commercial purchase. Um, certainly, sure. Uh, well, I'm going to go to the one that says download now uh, because there's probably a choice. Oh, no, that's wow. TeamViewerSetup.exe. So that was fast. Um, oh, there it is. This is TeamViewer 12. This is TeamViewer 13. And I, there are other um, 
TeamViewer tools uh, like this one, Remote Access, uh, they are separate applications. You want to use the ones that are right up here at the top. Completely free for personal use, that's us. This is TeamViewer 12, this is TeamViewer 13, and it's, it's the beta. No. No, actually, I would recommend you only uh, download the, uh, well, I will tell you that I am using the TeamViewer 13 beta, and the fact that you can't see me, uh, I am going to log that into TeamViewer as being an issue that I've experienced in the meeting. Um, so I am, I'm using the beta here, but TeamViewer 12 is their last stable version. So that should work just fine for you. Uh, I do recommend, sure thing, I do recommend that you periodically, uh, in fact, let me bring this up. When you have your own TeamViewer up, every once in a while, go in and look at, I think it's help, check for new version here and click on it and have TeamViewer tell you that you have the latest version. So uh, they don't announce those smaller versions very frequently. Uh, I would say every couple weeks there will be something very small. You won't even notice the difference in most cases. But I do recommend you stay current because I have had issues between myself and students when we were using different versions. At one point, um, the versions just will not work together. So I always recommend that you stay current and your students will likely uh, stay with whatever they began their semester with. Mm hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, certainly, certainly. So, uh, as we we're just Wow, I still have 30 minutes. I'm not certain I'm going to go the full 30 minutes, but um, I wanted to sort of show you a little bit about the Moodle that we have and some of the features of it. This is a very quick introduction, but um, when you connect to your, the Moodle, uh, you're going to end up at some sort of a home screen. Um, there are uh, little boxes off to the right-hand side here. And they have uh, little arrows. Uh, I'm going to look at this one that says upcoming events. There's a little arrow here in this block. And if you click on it, what it will do is it will move this upcoming events over to the left hand side. You notice I have navigation and administration here to the left. And they are, these are called docked. And so over here, it's a block. Over here, it's docked, and I, you know, I can't explain it any better than that. It's a Moodle feature, and it allows you to take the blocks that you use the most and keep them on your screen in a ready fashion here, a little more uh, uh, available. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both navigation and administration and undock them So this is what, for example, that it could look like to you. In fact, let me go to, yeah, I'll just do it like this. So all the blocks are here to the right, but I you know, don't want to have to scroll around to get to, for example, navigation. So there's a little tiny arrow here that says dock navigation block. So I click on it, and it now comes over here, 
and it's active, which means I can click on it and it'll, you know, go to various places or whatever. So uh, for me, uh, I typically have navigation and administration. Oh, let me go back to the home page and there's administration. I will dock that one as well. So over here I have navigation and administration. I can do site administration. I can do administration within the various courses, etc. Uh, I can administer our entire group of user accounts. Uh, let's see, bulk browse the list of accounts. Right now we have 116 registered uh, user accounts on this Moodle, and they are all uh, listed here. I can, you know, edit them, update them, add new ones, etc. All by going to this administration uh, dock area rather than doing the blocks here to the right. So that's just a, a quick feature that I do anticipate you will turn on uh, once you get your own Moodle uh, familiarity going. One other thing that uh, instructors will learn about is this light blue box here called editing and in this case it's blocks editing but we could be somewhere else let me go to um, I'm going to navigate to the courses and now it says manage courses but in every case this is your editing box so I'm going to go to just for grins we have this um, do, 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 oh I don't want that actually it should be there yeah here it is CHMJI course development. This is a course which I believe I have given you access to, and you're free to, to take a look at everything that's in here, download it, use it, whatever you like. Um, but this matches my course outline. You notice intro to online learning, Moodle, uh, course document preparation and upload, etc. So this is based on the course outline, but it's in the Moodle it's actually split within the Moodle. If I wish to do something in this space, I will turn editing on and when I do, I clicked editing and now various other features are now visible. If you're an instructor, this is what you will do to be editing your course content. So always remember, once you connect to your Moodle space, to turn your editing on or else it'll look like just what your students see and you won't be able to click on this to edit it you can only click on it to bring it up and view it for example so um, that's something else this little blue edit box will be your best friend when you have your own Moodle space um, you can uh, enroll students but I would ask I would ask that you allow me to do the student enrollments um, unless there's some extenuating circumstances. When you do, the students can click on my sites or actually hover over my sites and they will see every course to which they are currently registered. That's a very fast means of navigating. They connect to the Moodle, they log in on the upper right here and then they'll go to my sites and they will actually see your course and they can go directly to it uh, immediately. So they don't have to, you know, scroll around or navigate around or say, well, I want to go find the spring 2018 courses and then go down and click on Old Testament survey. No, they'll just go to my sites and it will be right there for them. The reason you do not see any of these courses listed for me is that I'm actually logged in as the administrator which gives me complete control of every site, every course, every account uh, as the administrator. We will learn more about Moodle as we go on but I wanted to sort of give you a quick uh, view of navigation. Um, you will not be able to see other Moodle courses unless you are joined as either a student or a teacher in that course. Uh, there, this Moodle is set up. Some Moodles do not have this, but I 
do. This Moodle does not allow guest access in any location. So you don't have to worry about uh, being concerned that the presiding bishop is going to just casually wander into your class and, and see how things are going. Um, uh, the Everything that is done here is done in a managed fashion. So you will know what students are there. You will know what students can see. And you will know uh, everyone that is enrolled in your particular course. Uh, let me bring up, in fact, I'm going to go to the special use course, go down to course development. And for example, I'm going to look at all of the users that are enrolled in this course. So I say enrolled users, and you notice how many people have or have had training through this course. I leave them all up here so that um, if they ever wish to come back and pick up any materials that they've uh, seen, uh, they can do so. So I can see if, for example, uh, Dr. Newman, if you were not listed here, you would not have access. Uh, but I do know that I have given you access to this already. So there, there you are here. So, um, yep, and and you are current, you are currently listed as a student. So you have view access, uh, but you do not have edit access within that space. But for example, you could not navigate over to the Old Testament survey course. Even though you may be you know, very good at teaching Old Testament survey, this particular course is limited to whoever is set up as a student or a teacher in that course. And I'll explain why later in our teaching. So any questions about the Moodle? Nope. Yes, in fact, um, I have actually set you up as a teacher in these, but as you click into that, you notice it's a blank course. Uh, there's no information in there yet. I uh, received the documents that you sent me, but you and I still have to figure out what goes where and in what manner um, so that they'll end up here. Okay. Correct. Correct. So here's one that uh, Dr. Tawani Roberts from um, the International Sunday School uh, put together. And uh, she actually teaches online Sunday School instructor here and you know she's put lots of time into this and this would be similar to what you would be able to have on on your sites now you do notice that a lot of this appears to be grayed out and the reason for that is dr roberts has hidden all of her later classes all of her later sessions she probably does that, and we'll discuss that during our teaching methods. Week one and week two are visible, or I'm sorry, the intro week one and week two are visible. But the moment we get to week three, it gets grayed out. If I were to try and second guess Dr. Roberts, I'd say that she doesn't want their students going any further than where she's teaching them. Uh, so. Uh, that's one method of doing it, and I will show you how to do that as well in, as, any, as an online instructor. Again, if I were to want to edit her Moodle space, I have the capability because I am the administrator of the entire Moodle, but she is the instructor. This is her space, so I will not click to edit her space because it's sort of like the 
you know, the principal walking into a classroom and starting to teach, well, you have assigned instructors for that. So uh, this is her space. I'm happy to show it off for her, but I won't be doing any editing or, or uh, updates in that space because it's not mine. Um, any other questions? Anything else at this point? Okay, navigation is, um, uh, I think, uh, very helpful to allow you to, uh, let's go back to site home. Many of these courses that you see are shown to me because I'm the administrator, but are not available to the students to see. For example, here are your courses, Dr. Newman. I see them, but students don't. They're hidden. So these are all the courses that we currently have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 courses online in some form or fashion. And again, we have been teaching with these courses since 2013, I think was the first uh, online course that we actually conducted in CHMJI. So it's fun, it's enjoyable. Nope. That is an excellent question, and let me demonstrate to you the answer to that. Uh, I'm going to go into the CHMJI course development space, which is my space, so I don't feel bad about uh, playing around in it. I'm going to turn editing on, and let's say I wish to um, uh, bring in something new. Let's say a new PowerPoint that I have. So I'm going to see if I can bring up my PowerPoint. Um, doo -doo. Let me find a PowerPoint file that I wish to do something with question one, rehearsal two. Yeah, let's do rehearsal two. This is just something that I was doing uh, with my company uh, for a uh, bid that we had. So I know it's there. Let me find out exactly where it is saved to. Oh, enable editing. Fine, thank you. Then I'll do a file, save as, so I can see the directory that it's in. Okay, it's in the NGITS under new access. Got it. So now I know where it's at. I will go open Explorer, do file Explorer, documents, new access, NGITS, and rehearsal two. So there is the, the PowerPoint file that I have, and like you saw, it was a standard PowerPoint slide presentation. I'm going to click on it and drag it over here and drop it onto the Moodle. And let's see where it went to. Do, do, do. Or did it drop? Well, maybe it didn't. Try that again. Try and drag it from this side then. Nope, didn't work. Okay. Then I'm going to click here to add an activity. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry, it is there. I did add this directly to the Moodle by dragging and dropping it up there. Uh, if I wanted to do anything with it, I could click edit, um, edit the settings for it. I could hide it or unhide it. I could uh, duplicate it, make it into another one. But basically, by dragging it up there, I have just made 
this available for online use through the Moodle. It's that simple. So that file is now part of my, my, my Moodle course simply by dragging and dropping it up there. So does that help answer your question, Dr. Newman? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, the uh, there are a, a number of configurations that I will also teach you. For example, this went up, and you notice we click on it, and it says open with Microsoft PowerPoint. Well, that in itself could be a problem if your students don't have PowerPoint or if their version is off or whatever. So I actually, uh, for example, I recommend the use of um, Adobe PowerPoint or Adobe PDF instead of PowerPoint. And the reason is it is easier for your students to get to. They have to worry less about uh, the format that they're going to use for downloading it. A PDF is an extremely widely used uh, document type, and they also can't edit it, and we'll explain about that as well. There are certain files that you should have on your Moodle as editable, and certain files that should not be editable, and I'll be teaching you that as well. So, uh, uh, yes, we have this file, but it is not yet uh, configured properly for use within the Moodle, unless I go to uh, a few things and edit it. You notice it, it has a few settings here, and we'll discuss all of those settings as well. So before I forget, I'm going to take this back down because it is corporate property. And it's gone. So. Um, the other thing, uh, I'm just going to, let's see if I can just try and take this exam or show it to you. Yeah, continue my last attempt. So the quizzes that we have online in the Moodle look somewhat like this. You have the question number, a little bit of information about your navigation in this course or in this particular exam. You have the question and you have response. That is the basic way of doing quizzes in Moodle, but you can do them uh, dozens or hundreds at a time. Um, I have uh, one particular course that uh, was put online uh, in conjunction with one of our other elders and it is a to his final exam is a total of 100 questions uh, that he put uh, into the what's it called multiple choice format and i formatted for the moodle the tough thing is it is difficult to put things up into moodle without having to massage them a little bit just to get them right so we'll talk about those as well as we continue in our uh, teaching. So you notice this is one, one page per question, and I have set them all up for essay type answers. Um, that in itself can be a problem, and I can, I will teach you about why certain uh, question types are better and 
why certain question types are not advisable. For example, the essay type questions require you to manually grade them. If you can do uh, multiple choice, true, false, and matching, the Moodle will grade them automatically. So, um, anyway, that's a little bit more about the Moodle. I think I am going to stop at this point uh, so that I don't overload you if I haven't already. Uh, but I did want to give you a kind of a refresher, uh, some ideas about what we're going to be headed for. And uh, uh, hopefully this has uh, gotten you all interested in the possibility of what can be done using Moodle and as an online instructor. Uh, I think it's a very exciting thing to do. And um, like I pointed out to Evangelist Jordan, this is not about <sighs> people that have a traditional instructional background tend to think that online instruction is stealing their students. And I don't believe that the point of this is sheep stealing. I think the point of this is that online instruction makes your coursework more readily available to more people. And therefore, uh, it's, it, you know, if, if certain people want to take advantage of it because it's convenient, okay, but that's not the main reason why I do it. I do it, like I said, uh, Evangelist Jordan, for that, that missionary out in Arizona that is um, taking care of her mother and she can't drive uh, in the evenings to a class to go for her uh, evangelist missionary license. She just can't. Uh, and yet she knows she's called. So that's the point of having online instruction, in my opinion. Uh, it's a joy to do it. Uh, and to make it available for people. Um, and I, I never feel that this is a proprietary thing. This is a ministry that I'm happy to participate in. I'm thankful that I'm able to be uh, of value. And uh, I look forward to making this something that you all enjoy as well. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. That's all right, sir. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, it's also uh, wonderful when you have students that pop up from uh, absolutely unthought of areas. Um, uh, we do have uh, Evangelist Jordan, you may know uh, Dr. Billy Spann. Okay, she was my first student. And um, she actually had gotten to a point where she was teaching uh, very late at night, it was like 10 to 11.30 p.m. because she had two students in Hawaii that she was teaching to from here in Maryland. 
And so she had to match their time zone so they could get off work in time so she could teach them. So um, it's, uh, again, it's, that's part of the flexibility of online instruction. You can make yourself available when it suits you. So, yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, wonderful. By the time we're done here, uh, you will feel confident in moving forward and putting any courses you like online. You, you can look forward to uh, continued nervousness for a while, but uh, and it, it'll level off about halfway through, and then it will start to peak again when you start realizing that you're going to have to do this. <laughs> you're going to watch me for a while, but then I'm going to start uh, uh, planning to hand the reins over to you, and at that, at that point, uh, we will help you work through your nervousness. Wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay. Well, um, I think we're about all done. Um, Missionary Bedford, did you have anything? Uh, I I have no. She's still there. Yeah, she's still there. Yeah. Yeah, she's the one that shows. Yeah, Dr. Newman disappeared. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the downside of beta testing. It there are new features, but there are new surprises as well. So um all right, uh that's fine. I don't know if Missionary Bedford is uh has a comment, but if you don't mind uh Evangelist Jordan, would you please finish us up in prayer? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Well, um, I hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful worship tomorrow. Uh, I, I am scheduled to teach Sunday school, so <sighs> prayers are appreciated. <laughs> Wonderful. Have a great evening. Good night.